Hello everybody, thank you for coming for the, to the first of six uh, events of the public program uh, of the exhibition Goddesses and Warriors, uh, which is dedicated to uh, 100 years of Maria Gimbutas. And I'm really glad to welcome Italian artist Ivana Spinelli, who came uh, from Bologna via Berlin mm -hmm. to Lithuania a couple of days ago and already visited an exhibition. Um, I'm really uh, glad to also introduce a curator and producer of art, Elisa Del Pret, uh, and also artist, curator, and activist, Lima Privita. And uh, I really want to thank all the supporters, uh, including the craft brewery Cura Operatura, and most and foremost, uh, we want to thank Italian Embassy in Lithuania. So without further ado, please listen to our first event and check our page to learn about more events to come. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. So we were saying something to introduce us, as we say, probably, <coughs> if you can listen. <laughs> Um, I can say I am, uh, I am European, I am Italian, and uh, I am uh, an artist. Uh, I'm trying to situate myself how Donna Haraway teaches us. And um, so I am many things, but uh, probably what identifies me, what I choose, is uh, this um, artist practice that means a lot or maybe nothing but uh, it's uh, something I can see and um, later I will show you some of the work just to explain why I'm here in this beautiful company and um, yeah Elisa uh, maybe uh, well, I'm Anisa Del Prete, I'm a curator and producer from Bologna uh, and I follow the Ivana's work mm, since years and uh, I found it quite interesting uh, and this is what we will discuss later probably and I'm very happy to be here, it's my first time in Vilnius and I found so impressive how it is active in terms of museum activity programs, public programs and this occasion. And uh, um, I would like also to mention that you are an author, so it's like writing, thinking is also part of what you do. And me myself, I'm also a curator and, and writer and uh, I do artworks occasionally more of activist uh, kind. Uh, but uh, in this context, I think we will all try to connect uh, Maria Gimbutas and her ideas, uh, which were important not only for archaeology, but also for philosophy and art and activism, and really to look uh, how through those years when she wrote the language of goddess and, and the, um, the culture of goddess, so how they came to nowadays and we would invite you also to join with your experiences and knowledges. So first of all, uh, let's start perhaps from the presentation of Ivana. Okay. Uh, I, I began with uh, some conceptual map that is really sketchy because um, it's the way I, I usually work um, uh, beginning with drawing and uh, in a way it's like uh, putting together things that are um, apparently different uh, or uh, op opposite. And uh, this is one of my first um, connections. I made uh, in 2004, something like that, because I was really impressed how um, the idea of terror were um, living on our body. We all, every day had the news about uh, terrorism and it was uh, coming in our house and uh, I really felt like uh, um, the representation of the woman was con connected somehow um, with uh, the idea of uh, uh, beauty and terror 
now I, I really make a synthesis, so it's, I don't know if it's clear, but you can see some connection that we can maybe discuss later. And uh, so, yeah, mainly here is the connection between uh, uh, how the aesthetic of terror can uh, mm, uh, can uh, introduce us to an idea of the world that, uh, uh, that is made, uh, is living on fear and uh, um, and you really feel the, the, the everyday aggression on a, also on a woman body, uh, especially. Um, and back. Uh, this is a, a, a map I made later. And uh, at the center is always uh, the body. Uh, also, if in my work, uh, you, when you see body, usually they are performative not mm, much representation as photography or yeah, maybe some drawing, but uh, the body is really uh, like the, the center of uh, so many conflicts um, that are happening uh, uh, in the reality, but also in the language. And uh, this uh, language conflict is what is really um, important to me uh, to put inside something that can uh, change a bit uh, or uh, slide the meaning and so um, this is I mean I just show you to um, to speak later how the aesthetic can really be uh, the um, visualization of uh, an idea of the world. So this is kind of my idea where uh, I see <laughs> this uh, connection and uh, I hope uh, this other connection, <laughs> the, the, the transparent one where you see animal body, vegetal, virtual robots, um, this, uh, uh, I mean, this, um, various intelligence uh, interacting together, not only how uh, technical um, experts can imagine, but how uh, artists and uh, poets uh, can imagine and feel, or children. Um, so I began to draw this uh, kind of funny, apparently <laughs> small figures, they usually are really small like this on a big uh, white paper because it's like they are kind of lost in this white uh, without a context, without uh, narratives, without stories they just wear this uh, strange uh, explosive belt that can uh, um, blow up every moment or maybe not, maybe it's, uh, it's theater and uh, you never know because actually never happened something to them. They just keep in a pose forever and um, I made this... Um, uh, somebody <laughs> tell me they are cute and it's really funny to me because they are, to me they are terrifying because they have no view, they have no body um, reality. They are really just poses. They are something uh, they do to be accepted uh, from uh, society, from uh, you know, um, the representation uh, we asked to women for so thousand years. And uh, I began to play with this idea and uh, I put on some bag um, these two figures that are uh, hidden on, under this uh, pink uh, teenager style uh, uh, bag, but uh, the idea is a global pink bang, not bag. 
because uh, uh, I, I tried to, to use this uh, um, aesthetic of uh, the dress code that we use every day and everywhere uh, also as a reappropriation of something that usually brand uh, uh, know very well and so they use uh, messages you can keep on your bag or t-shirt or what else and I think we can use this, uh, this aesthetic too to introduce in the reality some meaning that we uh, we like more just because they are questioning, they are uh, making questions, not saying uh, uh, oh how beautiful I am with this. It's not only that, but also uh, putting some ambiguous stuff uh, in their reality. Uh, these are again, uh, this is a drawing, but the idea is always the connection of different uh, areas, this was a uh, body, capital, and uh, this is uh, the, the relation made from an economist where some years ago uh, money uh, was uh, producing uh, goods and goods were producing money, but now money is producing money. and. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of things around this, but uh, just to show you how my mind uh, is uh, reorganizing, uh, trying to reorganize uh, meanings. And um, this is a sculpture also connected with that work about uh, minimum wage. And uh, I made a research about minimum wage and uh, I realized that uh, when you see uh, numbers about minimum wage of a state, um, I, I mean, when I were reading them, I really uh, could not understand if the, that minimum wage can be could be something good to have a, a decent life. And when I compared that numbers with poverty level. I understood that in some uh, nation like Bangladesh, for example, but not only, also in Europe it's a mess. Um, the, the poverty level is, uh, the minimum wage is really at the poverty level or less. That means that uh, legislation are uh, allowing um, employer, employer to, to give you the minimum to stay in a really bad life. <laughs> this is when uh, they follow the law, of course. And uh, this was a performance about that, and the using voices also. In, uh, this was quite more emotioning, because when you use voice, actually you feel the body, and uh, this was uh, really shifting all the research and blah blah blah. And we arrive here <laughs> where um, of course uh, I had uh, several uh, um, I mean I, uh, I think uh, my, my path in this practice is made of people I, may, I, meet, I meet and uh, I choose in a way to to follow and to and to meet again and uh, when I met the book of uh, Maria Gingutas by chance uh, in a bookshop I, I was really felt something like uh, something I recognize it and I didn't know why um, I I mean, by chance it's not really true, because what's, what was strange is that I was going to Sardinia to make an art residency and uh, really from nowhere I went to a bookshop asking something about Mother Godness that I never really, um, I was never interested in that before 
So I don't know actually uh, which voices I was following, but I met finally this book. And um, all the idea that uh, this science I was studying, for example, when I was uh, studying art, I saw, I don't know, this or that on a really beautiful Greek basis, and I never really saw them because I saw just decoration and I was studying uh, uh, down in the base, you know, the narrative, the tauromachia, the, the people uh, fighting. Uh, so that was what I was trying to read because the book, the art book was uh, saying that. So I think for the first time I saw this and I learned that uh, they are not, uh, in Italian we call it uh, Greche, that really like uh, they were invented in Greece. <laughs> but uh, here I discovered they were so, so ancient and so full of uh, another meaning of the world. And uh, this was really blowing my mind and um, I began to think, wow, okay, so this was a, a language, this was not um, decoration and naive, uh, something they did because they really had no idea of the world. No, we, we have this uh, naive idea of primitive, also the, the name, the, the adjective we use where s when something is called primitive, it's like, okay, it's, it's not really done. It's really, we have to complete with our uh, knowledge. Uh, but uh, I had the impression that really they, they knew a lot and uh, we just know, don't know a lot about the time. And uh, the Gimbutas uh, studies helped me to open all this idea. And so as this really were surprising me, I always try to, to spread this uh, to all the people I meet and make them head like this. <laughs> because it, I'm really enthusiastic. I mean, I'm an artist, so I don't need all the evidence. If this was not completely true, it's not really changing to me because this allowed me to believe that we had this uh, origin of Europe that were uh, Pacific and uh, uh, matrifocal and uh, kind of uh, um, paritary, how you say it's good uh, in English, paritary? Equal. 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 Equality in the society. So, um, as I believe, as you, uh, as you saw before in the other world, that uh, aesthetic is the, um, the, the diffusion of uh, an idea of the world. Uh, and now I'm trying to, to feel uh, the idea of the world also with this uh, um, concept. And uh, I choose that between all the signs, especially the zigzag, because I already liked it a lot before, just uh, I don't know to work in zigzag, and uh, mm -hmm. no, that is something playful, but also something you do in, uh, in the nature. Or, uh, it's also a metaphor of how you can uh, go through things without uh, mm, uh, breaking everything like a train, no? You go slowly like water do. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, the zigzag was uh, actually the most uh, ancient symbol of um, water and uh, was uh, was kept uh, from all the, um, the 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 main religion. If if we I mean if we 
we want to think about it, but especially it was uh, about that uh, Neolithic time that Kim Butas is uh, telling us. So in Sardinia, uh, I began to, to look for these uh, traces, also in the street, and uh, here especially, <laughs> I was doing something that, um, uh, that was, uh, this, this was a small, uh, very small church. And as a church is a lot of times, so maybe always, uh, are, uh, were made um, destroying the, the pagan, pagan yeah, mm -hmm. the temples. Uh, they were uh, before. Um, I underlined the, the zigzag, the, the chevron that was uh, on the on the path to go going to the to the church. And after I began to do this a bit uh, autistic uh, <laughs> thing <laughs> because it's like. Uh, uh, I have to learn a language uh, like when I was a child. I was doing A, 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 A many times to learn how to write it. So I repeat it with this uh, science. Uh, and I will really repeat it a lot in uh, a small uh, book notes or uh, in this uh, paper sheet. Like, uh, trying to memorize uh, how to do it by hand. Also, if um, as a Gimbuta studies uh, underline, you, you cannot really uh, transfer one uh, sign to a letter or uh, maybe a syllabus, but not, uh, we don't have the Rosetta uh, stone to to be sure exactly, but uh, I like that they can uh, speak about uh, an atmosphere. They can speak about uh, um, abstract with the abstract language, not symbols. Uh, so it's real language, but uh, not in the way we we think. No, it's not A B. And uh, so I'm trying also, uh, I rewrite them by computer because I am interested in how nowadays um, we use computer to define reality, to design um, everything and uh, so I rewrote all the drawing also like this uh, with uh, uh, one page full of uh, the one sign and some sentences that uh, we cannot translate really um, perfectly but uh, who knows and um, uh, in uh, this uh, digital uh, style I also made some uh, WhatsApp stickers that you can download from my website and you can use it in the chat. Here I was already, uh, it's, a, it's a joke, you don't know. I go to Maria Nimbutas, <laughs> we chat and uh, it's, uh, yeah, and this is also something, uh, I like to do something playful that uh, when people, See, is not uh, blocked in something, oh, it's academic, I don't know everything, so I cannot speak. Uh, I like to, now that is a play in something you can use and it's easy. And after, if you like, you can go deeper, you can uh, discover other things. And uh, so the work is like a, a door that uh, you open, it's easy, you go inside and after you, you know, you desire how to move. This was the installation I made um, in the National Gallery in Rome, in Italy. And uh, I really feel this like, 
a kind of a temporal space uh, portal, you know, because it's uh, from really the past, but uh, you can download the, the sticker, so it's going to, in a way, it's going to the future, or anyways, uh, uh, today. And uh, tell me if I'm going too much. No, no, no. It's okay, I, I go fast. <laughs> Uh, this is a meditation place that I made to relax after all this thinking and uh, stuff. I, I, was, um, uh, I, I was trying to, to make something that was really physical, no? this, um, because um, when I read the Gimbutas books also I feel like um, that language was special for many reasons, but one especially was that um, probably we didn't find uh, um, it was not written on uh, books, uh, but was uh, written on bodies, on the basis, on these small beautiful figurines that there are in this exhibition, and uh, they are really moving me <laughs> because they are so beautiful, but it's um, a body that you can really read, you know, and um, I mean also now we know that our body is a, a social body, is something that is not only flesh, but is, um, is written, is uh, you know, something that is full of code, is a, a social code that you can also uh, shift a bit and uh, all the discourse we have in uh, cultural and society life uh, they, they change uh, and, uh, and uh, you can change the idea of the body and um, so I, uh, I made this sculpture uh, trying to make uh, these uh, two I mean, this is uh, one sign and the triangle that is always present uh, in um, the figurines. And um, with this idea of um, lying uh, on, the, on the signs and uh, breathing and uh, feeling the air that can pass through the sculpture and um, yeah, if you want, you can meditate on it in uh, your way, because I think there are many ways of meditating. Um, and uh, yeah, this is one of uh, the sculpture. Um, this other one was another thing I was trying to do with the M or a zigzag, uh, so really connected with water, but also with the idea of movement. And uh, at the first I was uh, thinking to make a big game uh, on the floor, but I, I really wanted to go away of the idea of design or, uh, or something that was uh, monumental. So um, I thought to make something that was a kind of empty inside and uh, <laughs> I was filling it with some special things to me like uh, you know like uh, like children do you know they have a small bag that they put inside things secret things and here actually there are many special things to me and plants this plant was really special because maybe I have the detail after yeah this plant was in my studio and uh, as I make sculpture, I teach sculpture in the academy, I was thinking to make a copy of it. So I, I covered it with the resin. And uh, after one day, the plant uh, surprised me after some days uh, with a new, really new leaf, completely green and beautiful. 
and it was really alive. Uh, so uh, I was uh, surprised, and I realized that uh, they look uh, dead, but they are not. They are just awa awaiting for uh, the good time. Um, yeah. So these are uh, uh, here. There is also the the details. This is also uh, <laughs> another sculpture with the, the zigzag, but uh, there are a lot of things in it that are a bit uh, strange. Because, for example, this leg is uh, uh, is uh, made from my cat uh, during one year of sculpting. <laughs> And that's the idea of a uh, yeah, uh, post-anthropocentric world that uh, I would like to, to facilitate. So, yeah, I think we have yeah, done <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan, for, for this uh, very interesting presentation. And do you consider so you started the learning language yourself. So in a way you were creating it because uh, there is no, as you said, there is no Rosetta Stone, no, no exact meaning. Uh, Maria Gimbutas wrote in a broad, broader context. But if you want to take those graphic signs and try to, to write something with them, then you in a way need to invent the, uh, the, the, the alphabet itself. So how should you, or maybe, you think this one? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, how do you see that the uh, uh, science system which you were trying to actually use, uh, were you seeing more as like equivalent of some alphabet, but you mentioned that it's not uh, about alphabet, or rather uh, some kind of uh, pictogram, or even the uh, Road, road signs, you know, the like leading somewhere, kind of uh, references, some, some, something which uh, uh, springs your imagination. Like, so, what, what was your idea behind uh, using those uh, symbols? As kind of, uh, uh, yes, no, I, I was really trying to make a drawing and writing together. Because when you when you make drawing, actually you you write in a way, but um, we we make symbols, and here is different because they are really uh, signs. So they are um, something you can write, but. Um, you know, it's like when you sing a song uh, in a language you d don't really know. Mm -hmm. You you make some mistake probably, but you feel the, the music is uh, and the sonority of language. I think it's something similar. Yeah. Oh, it's very interesting that you feel the that the, the meaning, the hidden meaning of sound. It's like uh, so you. It means you. You will know how to pronounce those symbols. I don't know. Or sing them. I pronounce it probably with the body. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but there is something I, I discovered. I don't know, there are many theories, and I'm not an expert on language at all. But uh, when an uh, expert see the work, it's uh, fine how they find inside things. For example, um, the, Somebody told me that uh, this zigzag is similar to Mu, that uh, in uh, Egyptian uh, was a water. And of course, this has a sound, uh, we can uh, know how it was uh, pronounced. And uh, somebody else told me, of course, language began with sounds. So there is, of course, a connection, and we we'll probably discover it. In a while, but there is, as I understood, there is a big fight between um, language experts because everybody wants that uh, language is uh, beginning in that area or in that area, 
<laughs> yeah, like every Central European uh, state has their own Central Europe. But um, Elisa, could you please also step into the discussion because uh, I heard your interesting uh, comment on, on video about um, Ivana's work. And you also like uh, referred to philosophers, to Donna Haraway and, and, and others. I'm really interested in this connection of uh, like uh, contemporaneity and uh, and this give with us well. Uh, well, starting from you asked to Ivana, uh, what I found very very interesting in her approach is how starting from uh, Gimbuta's suggestion not the scientific study, but suggestion, uh, she uh, learned again writing how, and it is some, it's an exercise about how, to, how, and how we can re, uh, redefine uh, uh, starting from the de decodification. So we, are, we work about, we, I mean, her work, but also our life is about codes. No, uh, and, and what I found interesting is, is like she's able to decodify language, language that is starting to learn a new alphabet, but also uh, a new way of uh, making, like 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 a, as you said, like a child, like to start writing again from another alphabet, but also starting making things, like in the case of meditation place, in the case of sculpture, she learns, you learn how to make it, how to make it. I, I, did, I remember when we were together in the studio and, and she was really like trying to understand how these things can fit together. And uh, I immediately, as a producer, I asked her why you don't go to a guy that can help you, <laughs> so you can do it. Uh, and then, of course, that discussion, uh, and I recognize her attitude of being in, in making, so being uh, as a body, in uh, facing, in questioning what does it mean, making things. And it's something that I think has to do with, for instance, uh, with other uh, uh, artists that I know, um, female, uh, more women, uh, and maybe, I don't know, it's my idea, I, I just put on the discussion that as to do, you were speaking about where the language starts, and there's a big discussion about this, but uh, one of the options is that it starts in the family uh, environment, so in a sort of domestic situation where everybody has to take care of the other, no? it's a family, family environment. And I found this very interesting, uh, thinking how probably also the uh, all the mm, domestic uh, elements that we live uh, every day, taking care of other people, uh, wife, uh, husband, kids, but also other like cats. So I mean, you're 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 a little. Uh, group of people that you in some way choose uh, as also to do with uh, different languages so, so uh, learn a new way of uh, speaking and communicate with different people so you all the time learn kids but also with us but also with your sister I mean you, you we use different languages and uh, and also we all the time we have to do with making things to taking care of Object and and in this in this sense I also read her uh, attitude to sculpture but also I'm thinking about other artists that you probably know I mean, you know Italian like uh, Chiara Camoni or also uh, Alessandra Sprand that has to do with this science that we find around us how to read things all the codes and the signs that we have around us. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes a, a big sense. Uh, um, do you see connections? You, you both uh, with some older generation of Italian artists, meaning like second wave feminism, uh, like those who were dealing with um, concrete poetry, uh, inventing their own uh, alphabet, like Tommaso Binga and, and some others. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
is there a connection or is just like some art history for food? You want to say? I, I, um, I feel like uh, there is a continuity, but also a discontinuity, of course, because uh, everybody knows maybe that feminists, there are a lot of feminists, and also inside uh, there are a lot of discussion. Uh, luckily, no, because uh, we we y you never uh, find uh, a final theory that would be scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like the idea that, for example, I um, when I when I see that generation um, women work, uh, I. I really feel um, this a strong power of language on the body and um, uh, but also I would say nonostante, I would say nonostante. Uh, um, nonostante. So, I, I also also despite. despite. Despite, thank you. Despite the body because because uh, in all the history, I, and I discovered this uh, has uh, an origin in Greek discussions. Uh, woman, no, woman is uh, connected with the heart, heart and uh, it's really made by clay. It's uh, something physical. Uh, uh, so it's really. Yeah, it's connected with caring, uh, but um, not really thinking in an abstract way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really want to underline how this is a language, and also if you use it uh, in a playful life, uh, in a playful in a playful way, or um, uh, without making big speech. Because this is also what I like. Uh, uh, we go slow, we go, but uh, finally something is arriving to the point. And I really um, feel that uh, uh, this way I work can be strange for a feminist of the uh, 60s. But uh, it's also strange for my students, maybe, that are. Um, around 20 years old and they really don't feel the duality men and women they just are people people <laughs> yeah a complexity uh, a big identity to you know uh, that uh, we discuss how to nominate and how the person is uh, auto um, is a referring to herself, to himself, to themselves, and uh, <laughs> this is so interesting to me because I feel uh, now we can uh, be ready to to Gilania mm -hmm. in a completely other way. I don't know if it's uh, my yeah, it's, it's a very interesting concept. You mentioned Gilania, and we will come back to that because I also want to hear from Elisa. Uh, have you seen this uh, Susan Santoro book? There is this uh, book. Uh, uh, yeah. It was the, yeah. So it all it was also inspired by Maria Gimbutas and uh, yeah. somehow also looking for a new way of, of expressing. Uh, I don't know, finding new language, but more through bodily experience, through female body, and you also connect body, but also uh, the the system of science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how, how do you see that? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, I would like to make a jump. <laughs> jump! <laughs> okay. uh, because um, I found that this, um, this approach that Ivana had in his community in dialogue with Gim Butas, very close to what also other artists as in compared to another, uh, for me, very uh, uh, inspiring figure that is 
not men, but it's uh, uh, Warburg, and it reminds me a lot of this idea of signs and symbols that travel mm -hmm. around the world and uh, in some way they tell about the transformations also of the society and, uh, and how we, in some way we have uh, like um, figures and symbols and pathos formal uh, that we uh, can recognize all the time in a sort of safe way. So we have something that we can, uh, can tell about us as part of a wider uh, group that is you know, country but also other categories. Uh, yeah, so um, you basically say that it's a broader context, not necessarily limited to some second wave feminism or, or any other artists who were playing with those um, symbols or ideas of, of the goddess like Mary Beth Edelson or, or somewhere else. So it, it's more like uh, about contemporary coding rather. I think it's a, uh, it's a question of every every time, in every, uh, each, each uh, epoch, each period, is all the time we are questioning uh, codes. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all, every day we are transforming our codes, and this is what I found interesting in, in, in Ivana's work, uh, is exactly this, so the idea of, uh, is it possible to start again a new uh, a new that is prehistoric, <laughs> so that's also interesting. This jump on the back and looking in the future, looking for the future, but uh, looking back to what what was another kind of history that instead of what they learned us in some way. It's interesting that to say looking back, that's how we in in Europe or maybe in Western world uh, imagine the past that we should look back. Uh, while in some cultures there is this idea that the past is in front of us because we've seen it, uh, it, 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 it was. So it's something we can learn about it, but then the future is something we haven't seen and we don't know what's going to happen. So, so it's also like the way of looking, how to look and where, and it's interesting. And I would like to ask you to, to tell a little bit uh, more about that uh, idea of yours of Gilanea. And then I will open the floor that people would maybe join with their ideas and thoughts. And uh, uh, if I can say also something about... Uh, uh, it's interesting that you, you were speaking about symbols and I found uh, recently something in Butas was uh, underlining the distinction between uh, symbols and signs that are really important because uh, the, the, the Symbols, uh, we always use it for a really long, long, long time. But uh, science as an abstract uh, language is really making a difference. And uh, this is why I, I'm trying to, to use the abstract language also when it's uh, made uh, as a body, <laughs> because uh, um, I repeat this, I think it's important that uh, uh, we think about the language that, uh, for example, uh, uh, now it's really changing uh, um, towards the image. You know, we always use more and more images as icons uh, to express concept, and so it's why with these stickers, maybe you you use you know words uh, in a special languages uh, we know, but uh, it's spreading uh, ideas, and uh, it can spread also this idea of Gilania. That uh, I'm uh, wondering about uh, contemporary Gilania because uh, this is also a word uh, that I find beautiful. It's a beautiful made. Uh, by Ryan Eisler, who was a sociolo sociologist, who is, I think. And uh, she put together these uh, two roots uh, from Greek. One is uh, gyne, 
that is uh, women, and the andros that is men. And uh, so it's a G. N, and she put in the middle L that I find beautiful, no? that it's put in together by hand, uh, these are words. And so Gila Nia is uh, speaking about this uh, equality, uh, equal society that uh, was existing for 3,050 uh, years. That is a long, long time to imagine. Uh, that was uh, pacific and uh, uh, peaceful. Huh? Peaceful. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. They tell this. Of course, some theorists say no, it's not possible. We are aggressive <laughs> human beings. And, um, and uh, I think it's a chance to think this in the future. Because when I, when I read this, I think, wow, this is a uh, uh, sci fi, uh, it's a, it's a fantastic, uh, no, it's, uh, but it's coming from the past, so maybe it's possible for now and for the future. This is the idea no, if I answer to yeah, you know, the questioning. Bit, yeah, I, I asked about this uh, idea of Gilania, and that it sounds, uh, of course, amazingly beautiful, and um, I don't know if. Uh, anybody even uh, tries to, to state it as a goal and achieve it even though we sort of strive for a more equal society you know, but uh, who knows but uh, uh, we can ask to I, yeah. also, I, mean, I also would like to yeah. add an interesting thing about the L that you say that it's mm -hmm. together and coming to also an our way side or idea uh, and the cat that we saw at the yeah. end yeah. probably this L is also everything that is yeah. That can connect also from other categories, other words, uh, vegetable, vegetable, or animal, or uh, yeah. the, the others. How yeah. Rosy Predotti were uh, speaking about others to you know, when yeah. uh, for a long time we had the uh, white uh, Western uh, men and and the others. <laughs> the others were women, uh, uh, people from countries that were not in the West, and uh, mm -hmm. animals, vegetables yeah. that were so other tough, no intelligent. And now science is uh, is showing how the vegetal is intelligent and. Uh, we really need vegetable, vegetable to survive. It's not to the contrary. If a uh, human, if a uh, human, but if a human being uh, disappear, vegetable can be can uh, live uh, in the world also after a disaster. Yeah, we're well, not that necessary for this. Life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Let's, uh, let's involve uh, other people also. If if you have your thoughts on on um, what uh, Ivana or Lisa said, or or maybe you you would like to share uh, your own experience of uh, uh, studying Gimbuta or, or doing work, works related to that, and I I probably ask Carla Gruaris because she studied uh, uh, in Canada. Uh, I guess you started there. Mm. Could you please tell us more about your experience? Um, well, I was doing my undergraduate studies in the late 1980s in Canada, and uh, all I can say is that as part of the whole environment for women's studies and hundreds of, kind of discussions and so on, with the, with just the existence of Google Dust and her, her queries, I, I, don't, I don't remember. I never studied them very closely myself, but just but I was aware of them. Uh, and mainly, I recall that as having been something that uh, her work has having just really validated a lot of uh, a lot of thinking and desires for women to, to for things to be different, um, and that they could be and that they have been in the past. That things different, not a picture of the society. So that's that's. Just, 
Uh, as much as I can say about it. But as, uh, when you came to Lithuania in the 90s and uh, that there was this huge interest in, in the work of Maria Gimbutas, mm -hmm. uh, were you inspired as a young scholar, young artist to, to, by Gimbutas? So it's, it was rather like some supporting structure, like we're all yeah, feeling. More like, a, more like a supporting structure, but it was really so part of the subconscious of that um, feel, you know, I think. And, and I never thought about direct links to my own video work, but mm. it's there, I mean, particularly the piece that I did, the, the, the short video on, in Blue Book, My Body in the Water, I think that's, mm -hmm. when I go back to it, that's, you know, using some of the same kind of female body yeah, symbolism and, and kind of something prehistorical a little bit about it. So yeah, it just was part of, it just was part of the air, in, in the air, you know? and definitely a big support structure. And now, now I want to go back and study it properly. So. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And somebody else uh, want to, to join or to share, or maybe just to, to discuss with us, uh, to comment on something? Or, uh, yeah, use the... Thank you, Ivana. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. I just... Uh, I uh, wanted to ask you if uh, two things about the contemporary Italian and female situation. Hmm. It does your work kind of get more important because of that or not? And uh, um, the other question is the kind of which practice do you post, do you do you kind of get the energy of some kind of yeah, because also uh, Gimbutas, uh, she calls herself sometimes kind of witch, witch, which she practices. They are also now some of the contemporary artists or some activists. They are not just uh, playing it, but they living, living the witch, uh, witch uh, life. So two questions for me. Do you mean uh, in female situation in general in, in Italy? Italy? Yeah. Not only artists, I mean, yeah. in general, uh, it's not easy. It's not, uh, I mean, it's like uh, every day there are women killed, and uh, really every day, so this is already a bad result. And uh, so there are a lot of movements like uh, Nuna di Meno, but also other uh, movements that are really active, uh, but um, and uh, I mean I try to to learn from everybody and to uh, to be in contact with uh, with the idea of uh, going in the streets uh, claiming for different uh, legislation also because uh, there is a lot to do and uh, you saw how uh, recently we, we had uh, this um, failure now we try to have this um, uh, legislation the DL exam that uh, was uh, failing because uh, we have uh, in the Senate it's still a very um, archaic and patriarchal uh, way of thinking and um, we have to fight, we will still have to, to fight and uh, I try to fight with the language and uh, speaking with people so I hope that teaching can be also a way I have a really a lot, a lot of students that are women, but <laughs> somebody is uh, making transition. I mean, uh, there is a, a reality where um, definition of the person is uh, really um, um, uh, meaning uh, a meaningful uh, question. Uh, it's important to not only to make discussion, academic discussion that are important to define the language, but I think also 
in the streets, a lot of uh, in the street, like also social, or what you can think about discussion. Um, I think there is a lot uh, to do, and uh, yeah, but the situation is not is not easy. I mean, I feel uh, it's changing, of course, with respect to ten years ago. Uh, we can speak um, freely about a lot of things. Uh, we have more women doing uh, beautiful stuff, but always, you know, in the top uh, position, of course, it's more difficult. And you see how language uh, referring to people who has a power, in a way, it's always very aggressive, very trying to, you know, to put your position lower. And uh, so, um, of course, there is a lot to do, but I trust that uh, we, can, uh, we can do something. Also through heart, I trust it. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you can tell if you believe that uh, contemporary Gilani is possible. <laughs> What's your point of view? Or like learning new language and new system of science or even the new way of reading uh, not only the science system but the environment uh, would help uh, change our thinking about the planet, about the female body. Yeah. I guess that's... Another... Uh, another uh, important aspect that I put on the table is rebirth. No, that is also connected. I really like this idea of not linear, but circle mm -hmm. time and circle life and circle also thought. Mm -hmm. No, so that is not you don't arrive to an end or a solution or somewhere. But it's always everything is generating something else and then. And it, I think it has to do with environment for sure, but also with the uh, human beings. And it's uh, very uh, about what I, 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 I read about uh, Gil Butas also thought that it's uh, very fascinating for me. It's we always, I mean, uh, we have a, a discussion about Robert. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because this is also, this is interesting, putting together Gimbutas, Rosi Bredotti, Donna Haraway, that are my favorite girlfriend. Pistoletto. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pistoletto. Okay. Yeah. I'm more, uh, yeah. <laughs> more uh, Rosi Bredotti. And, uh, because, yeah, we have a lot of men's playing, but um, we. I feel like, for example, the idea of uh, uh, Rosa Bredotti is using uh, in one book, uh, she's speaking about uh, affectivity. It's possible in English to say affectivity. Affectivity, yeah. Today I invent words. <laughs> affectivity as uh, something that can change uh, things, no? because. Uh, if we think uh, in a power um, system, uh, also if you are a woman, or what's, whatever you are, you have to use a kind of language because otherwise they, they, the other people don't understand. And, but uh, there are things no, that can shift a bit and uh, introducing this power system that uh, is existing and you have to consider it. You cannot go in a way and just act like uh, some alien, no? Well, maybe you can, but you know the results. Uh, and so you have to manage. The more you have uh, the more you have a position, the more you have a power in this uh, power system, the more I think it's important how you choose to manage things. It's why I feel like uh, I see some difference between um, 
people uh, choosing to use all this uh, power language and uh, making space around and uh, who cares or people that try to see other people that I, I think is not easy I'm, I'm sure for example I'm tr I try I try a lot but I I'm, I'm surely a failure in uh, a relationship I mean is uh, it's not easy to take care of other people also no? but also trying maybe is uh, is uh, it's something it's a beginning <laughs> so if we summarize uh, by uh, trying to answer the question which was posted in that uh, uh, talk Gilania, sex or what? <laughs> so what? <laughs> well, what? I mean, sex is not bad if yeah. you make it in a creative way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. Or there, we, I think we are doing a lot also in uh, uh, the idea of desire, sensuality. You know, I see. I learn from my students again. For example, sensuality in a post is not bad, it's, uh, you can use it, you know you have it, but uh, it's not a, uh, the only thing that you can use or can define yourself. So sex is okay, if sex is something uh, powerful with energy, with creativity, with uh, um, freedom, you know, I want to be just alive, I want to enjoy, I want to... And in your own terms, with your own expression, mm -hmm. right? Not, not some pictures which you showed like really mocking this ideal femininity, but really more diverse uh, approach. The Gilani or what? Yeah, yeah. What's sexy? I mean, like, what is sex now? Like, why, why should we think this like sexy is this old-fashioned, like high heels, uh. like you were mocking? I find sexy a lot of things, but especially energy of people. When you see something in their eyes that is uh, switchy, and you feel like oh, that's an idea. It's uh, it's like attraction, no? Because of uh, you feel it's. Uh, but meaning that uh, in terms of your works. Uh, uh, we can find another language for that too. For, the for, for, for new, yeah. new sexy, let's say it. Gilania, new sexy. <laughs> new sexy, mm -hmm. yeah. So, what would be your thoughts for, like, to summarize? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to, uh, erotic sensuality, sexy, because we need, maybe we really have to cultivate the space between one person and the other through attraction, like, as you said, like, to to be attracted from the other, not only in a, a sexual way, could be, but I think this is something that we have to take care of. This the space uh, from you and the other, no? Because sometimes we just don't care about this. So it's, it's what I was saying, trying to say before about fa fami family, in a new terms of family, of course, not not family traditional way also, but uh, taking care of the others, uh, that is environment, that is you, you, uh, us, I mean, this, this space for me is a, is a, is a place that it's, uh, it's happening something, I mean, I, I'm, I'm attracted from all of this situation, you know, all of, all of you, I mean, it's interesting to be here for some reason, we are here in the same place, so. So I think that we have to work on in this space to be more conscious about the other. I would like to intervene and, and express gratitude to the museum and the conception of this uh, uh, relationship between uh, creativity and uh, reflection, contemporary reflection, and uh, what anthropology is uh, since ever. Because through this uh, uh, science, through the interpretation of the world that uh, with the frieze, with the Greca on a vase was uh, started since ever. 
I mean, we started uh, as human beings to put our hand, our foot, or the depiction of uh, you know animals, uh, wild animals that we were hunting. Since then, we try to manage all these uh, eternal questions: of where we are, what is the sun, what is the divinity, what is the uh, relationship among us. So this is the theme, and anthropology is just a discussion about the men and women, of course. Uh, mankind, and uh, this theme is uh, very much a continuity. I mean, since the beginning of expressing in a visual way to the creativity of an artist, which may reflect and true Maria Gibutas, we have always the same question: how to relate with the others. This is the the theme of our life. So, thank you very much for putting together these things. I see a very natural uh, uh, continuity on that. I was a little bit skeptical at the very beginning when I was proposed of this. Oh, Gibutas has also uh, uh, inspired some artists. What is that? I mean, uh, this is anthropology, this is uh, science, this is uh, uh, the courage uh, and uh, I would say the less of uh, the lack of uh, attention to the academia from Maria Gimbutas, which was a kind of pro provoking agent uh, and the academia reacted negatively to her. Why artists? Uh, what do the artists have to say? And now, listening to this uh, witness of uh, how it works, I think is fascinating. Is uh, just telling the same story, that where we are, how do we relate with us and what can be the use of these signs to express our desire to live peacefully and together with the others. That's the, the, the essence, the substance of uh, our uh, life. And uh, the, this is just one planet. And the problem is exactly how to put together almost 7 billion of people, which is not a joke. It's a, quite a big family. So the theme is uh, to live peacefully. And uh, uh, we try because, uh, I mean, we have so many examples. I, I, I share the, 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 the pain of listening every day in the radio how many uh, women are killed every day by men that are completely unable to manage their own sentiments. This is uh, the drama of nowadays in Italy but in other countries as well, uh, that people are unable to manage their own uh, existence. This is terrible. So, Thank you for organizing this uh, uh, junction between anthropology and uh, art in uh, 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 through the Maria Gimbutas role. Thank you for your very insightful comment. I think it beautifully summarizes the discussions yeah. and also brings uh, the input from, from the audience, very qualified input, but, uh, but thank you very much. And thank you for all the people who attended the discussion. The artists and the curator are still here. We can approach them and talk together and see the exhibitions. So, uh, thank you. Thank you to you for guesting my works, there and my visions. And uh, yeah, discussion is always open. Also later, uh, I don't know in the future if you want to write or. Yeah, so you can you can find Ivana's uh, con contacts, I guess, uh, through the museum or even maybe yeah. the exhibition. Thank so you. thank you very much. <laughs>